The sniper has a myriad of responsibilities in a hostage scenario. As well as observing and relaying crucial intelligence, they will be covering the movement of all personnel and preventing terrorist escape attempts. During an assault, they will be constantly monitoring the team's progress and report any new hazards or terrorist activity. Right, 1-8 to the balaclava on, one down to five, carrying along. When the time comes, they will be ready to dispense a precisely aimed shot wherever necessary. After being fully briefed about the incident, the sniper teams will be deployed around the target area. Each allocated a side of the building to cover, based on a colour labelling system. For our scenario, the area is split into four zones. White, green, black and red. White normally being the front of the target building. One lads. OK. Just move through the police cordon now, right? You're going to move into red. Can you cut down this wall of this building here? And then cut through and I'll show you the position from down there, yeah? Okay? Yep. Any okay. probs? No, fine, fine. Okay. Okay, lads. Strong hope. Down here to the right, right? So about 150 metres away. Each sniper team will take it in turns on duty. Six hours on, six hours off. Snipers will wear the same black kit as the assault team when positioning in a built up area, but can switch to a ghillie suit when hiding in deep foliage. Okay, we're looking on to black, yeah? We've got a little view of uh, red as well, once, once a little block of red, yeah? See? So what we're going to do is we move forward another maybe five, eight metres. Try and pick up a position there. Get down. Just check you get a decent sight picture there. The sniper will have at least two rifles. One for daytime use and one fitted with a night vision scope. They will have been through exactly the same training as every other member of the SAS and may therefore be called upon to join the assault team if necessary. The sniper teams are coordinated from the operations centre, normally by a sniper commander who will be in contact with the teams via radio. It is his decision and orders that will initiate a sniper assault. Zero, this is a radio check, over. Roger, sniper one, come back. Yeah, three in position on black, over. Right, let's have a look at the sniper team in a kind of terrorist situation. The spotter's role, he's looking through the binos. He's got a wider view of vision of the target area. He's also looking for any movement in the building. As soon as he sees that movement, he will notify his sniper. The sniper will then pick up his weapon, look through his telescopic sight, and try and pick up the X-rays, or the enemy in other words, which is in the stronghold. This information has been relayed back to control at all times reporting back any information on the target area. The sniper rifle of choice of the SAS is the L96A1. Very accurate weapon. Accurate up to a thousand meters. Let's run through the weapon. You've got a butt. This butt can be extended or shortened depending on the size of the person who's operating the weapon. You must keep the weapon on your shoulder nice and firm at all times when you're going to take a shot. The telescopic sight. It's eight times magnification by 42 mils peripheral vision. You've got some Velcro on both sides. Attached to that is going to be a signaling device. This system pressle switch here is attached to a small transmitter which will send a signal back to the control every time you've got a target. So you press that, a green light will appear back in the control center. They know that you've got a target in your sights and you're ready to shoot. There are times when the commanding officer may decide a sniper-led assault is more appropriate than a CQB. In a sniper-led assault, the commander will have decided in advance how many green lights he needs to have the best chance of a successful assault. He will wait patiently until he sees as many green lights as possible before giving the command to attack. So what if, in our siege scenario, an opportunity arose where snipers have the chance to eliminate the terrorists with minimum risk to the hostages. 
This tactic would also utilize a ground assault team as backup. It takes patience, nerve, and a tremendous amount of skill to operate a sniper rifle. When the moment comes to give the green light, some kind of distraction will be arranged to give the assault team a split-second advantage. Sandy. Stand by. Stand by. Go. The decision to perform an assault is never taken lightly, and is the last resort when all other means have been exhausted.